Warning, technician discretion is advised. Hey, welcome back to Repair University. Larry and Jason here today. We're gonna to talk about technician discretion. Oh um, boy. I know, right? <laughs> And it's uh, not what you think we're talking about. No, it's not. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's not an HR thing. It's it actually a HR repair thing. decision thing. It is repair decision. So um, this is based on some of the vehicle manufacturers that are out there are now giving us a little bit more liberty to make some decisions on our own when it comes to repairing vehicles, uh, mostly on exterior panels, rocker panels, A pillars, B pillars, quarter panels, things of that nature. Non-structural. Non-structural uh, components parts, right. or, or, or secondary assistant, you know, uh, um, structural, non-structural components that uh, seems to be a misunderstanding uh, about what is and what isn't, you know, and, and we're going to be surprised some of the panels that are considered non-structural that people for years thought they were. Yeah, we, we tend to get fairly decent amount of questions about this. Where should I section it and is it a specific location or is it a general area and how do I go about that? And it's a decision process that, you know, the technicians are often, are, are often uh, tasked with. Uh, but certainly the estimators need to be aware of it as well so they can make the, write the, write the sheets well, the, accordingly. The issue I've seen and the, some of the Picatech questions that we get in, um, some manufacturers are very specific on the areas and then other ones uh, have like a circle yep. around a, a portion of the component and you're like, can I, set, well basically anywhere in this area and uh, well the damage is here, can I just go this portion here? It's kind of like um, uh, ve very, very open to interpretation, yep. and we try and help you through Picatech make a educated decision on those areas. Other companies will have between these two points, and that gives you, you know, so where? Well, try the middle first, and then you yeah. can go left or right of it. But uh, yeah, it can be a little misleading, especially that a lot of these repair procedures have no um, uh, no written guide. It's basically like hieroglyphics. Right. It's just it's pictures and some circles. It's like section encircled areas it's like uh that's the best you can give us yeah. <laughs> well, yeah which is again we it's, it's i think it's nice that they're giving us that that option to to use our discretion a little bit but we need to approach that delicately now before we get into some of the oem procedures let's talk about what this this is not um this is not the old icar general sectioning guidelines um, this is an OEM published procedure um, that they've developed, or not procedure necessarily, but OEM information. Um, so let's, let's go back in history a little bit first and talk about why the old general sectioning guidelines typically don't apply on vehicles and that th this is not what we're talking about today. We're not talking about general sectioning guidelines. We are talking about OEM specific um, guidelines with regard to repair of their vehicles. So let's go way back. We're gonna go. We're gonna go back. Um, remember these vehicles? Oh, three total losses. <laughs> yeah, well, right from the factory. Right, <laughs> right from the factory. Um, <laughs> the uh, Chevy Cavalier, Buick Skylark, the uh, was it Do Dodge Omni, Plymouth Horizon, something like that. Yeah. Ford Escort, Mercury Lynx. Oh wow. I used to have. A, I used to have an Escort. Wow. I, I think I rode in a Cavalier one time. <laughs> I think I rode in one one time. The the rest I've seen them, but I never rode in them. <laughs> So these are the vehicles that were used um, for, the, for the general sectioning guidelines were developed back in um, 1985. The vehicles we're working on today are vastly different. Everything back then was mild steel, uh, thicker materials. Now we're dealing with anything from, you know, up to 1500 MPA and beyond. Um, and so we can't apply those mild steel repair methodologies to today's vehicles. Um, it, so let's kind of, let's just go through the general session guidelines, what they were, and again, these, these are old, and, and the one thing that I always question when it comes to this is, are there even locations on a vehicle today that would apply for general sectioning guidelines? If you look at a lower rail, for example, like name me an area that's not either a clap zone designed to absorb energy or a reinforced area designed to transfer that energy. It's all, it's all one unit that's designed to work together. Uh, but those general section guidelines back in the day were don't section near suspension, engine driving, mounting. I wish again, I think the OEMs are still recommended. Well, right, which we still have now. Yep. You know, we, we still have those areas. Yep. They don't want you doing anything uh, in holes that are larger than three millimeters, so eighth of an inch. Um, uh, and I've seen some GM and Ford procedures that say to avoid those spots. Even on the F-150, they have some of that stuff there yep. about, you know, the size of a hole and how far away you have to be. So there's some engineering that went into this way back when, and they're still following some of that. Yep. Uh, not near compounds, shapes, or structures. Well, again, find, find an area that doesn't have a compound shape uh, yeah, or structure on there. Nuts. 
Reinforcements, again, everything's got, again, and reinforcements doesn't necessarily, in today's world, mean a secondary panel. It could be a lateral stiffener, it could yes. be it could be the type of material, those are all types of reinforcements. And we're not talking about bumper reinforcement, Correct. we're talking in a rail, inside of a rail or something like yep. that. And uh, yeah, I mean, you could even have a reinforcement portion where it's a tailor weld, a tailor, uh, a rolled blank, where it goes from a th yes. same type of metal, but it's uh, same strength metal, uh, it goes from a thinner panel yep. to a thicker panel by just the way it's rolled, and then all of a sudden it gets real thin for a couple of spots, and then gets thick again to create a little crush zone. You can't, you know, section and do anything, even though inside there's no reinforcement. Yep. Uh, hinge locations, again, makes sense. We don't want that high stress still, area. You know, that's still true to today. D-ring mounting, a seatbelt low mounting locations, we don't want. I, I don't see that in too many procedures to avoid that uh, because there's nothing near it. Yep. It's usually above it or below it. And then where vertical and horizontal panels meet, um, again, that makes perfect sense too. Again, we don't want the, those stresses in there. And then collapse and crush zone. So we've never wanted to section in a collapse or crush zone. Again, unless there's an OEM procedure, procedure for, it. for it. So let's dive into Honda first. Um, Honda, uh, not, not that long, it's been a few years now, I guess, but they released their collision repair information industry position statements on their, on their website and, their, and they've got these body repair um, articles. articles in yeah, there, come including, out, the, cool. including their manual, their welding and sectioning guidelines revisions. So they've gone through and they've made some, some changes to how they section vehicles and what they want to recommend. Uh, but before we start talking about the, the sectioning, I want to point out one other thing in this document is that Honda does allow for partial part replacement at a factory seam without a published procedure. Yes. Um, this was, uh, this stems from a Honda CRV several years ago where um, you, the, the inner quarter panel was only serviced as a massive assembly that required the whole rear body panel to be removed, required the roof to come off um, in, in order to replace that inner quarter panel. Um, but there's a nice factory seam. So if you've got like a wheelhouse damage or some damage in that particular area, you were, you're a, a very, I know you like the, the invasive and intrusive repair <laughs> conversations, um, to get in there and remove that whole part was was rather rather destructive process. You're yes. damaging OEM spot walls, you're damaging OEM corrosion protection on an undamaged and, and, part. And the, and the value of the vehicle versus what it sold for brand new versus you're, you're taking apart half the car to get this out. It's like, okay, it's, you total the car for no reason because I need this small, I don't know, let's say right. in this picture, the green portion, yep. uh, which you could easily get in there. And I've tried to explain to people over the years, and I know Ford has some stuff like that too with like um, upper rail, apron, and strut tower, and you can, you know, take the apron off. A partial replacement, <clears throat> you'll have to, develop some sort of an idea of a time. So I would usually tell somebody, find a, a vehicle that's similar, that has a replacement time for that particular component, use that labor time, and then add for taking the part off. If you drill this out properly, or grind down the welds, or, or use a belt sander to take the welds down, on the opposite side, you could still get a good flange that you could resistance weld on. Partial replacement is a drill or a sander. Yep. You never cut anything. Not a, not a saw or a cut off. Yeah, wheel. you never yeah. cut anything. A sectioning procedure will always require some sort of cutting. So if you're cutting, if you have a saw, a cutoff blade, a whiz wheel tool, whatever the case is, you're probably doing it the wrong way if it says partial replacement. If you're drilling only and then putting a component on or you're sanding the back side of the panel so you can still resistance weld, then it's a partial replacement. Uh, sectioning will always have a time in the database because they're giving you a sectioning procedure or some sort of sectioning. may not be the right time, you might have to you know, argue that, but there'll be a time in the database system. A partial replacement's never going to have a labor time. You're going to have to develop that and figure that out on your own, and it's always uh, never inclusive of cutting, and that's the biggest thing I tell people. So I can't cut that pink, I guess, upper, outer roof rail support that comes down. I can't cut that in half and weld half of it in. Right. I have to put the whole pink part in or the whole green part or that whole little blue part at the bottom. That has to go in its entirety. I can't cut anything in half or cut a portion of it off. Now, a couple of important notes on the, on the Honda uh, procedure. So first of all, this is not applied to ultra high strength steel. So anything 980 and above, now they, they've got to publish 980 to 1500, however, if there's newer steels coming out, 1800 right. and, and beyond uh, in the future, that still isn't going to be applicable. So yeah, 980 is the lower. Yep, exactly. So below That's 980, you're pretty pr pr pretty good. Anything above that, even if it goes above 1500, you can't do. Yep. 
But I do like that they've got this replacement of body service parts as supplied at factory seams is the preferred method, except when it may cause unnecessary or excessive intrusion into the body structure. So again, we're keeping more of those that those OEM spot walls intact. We're keeping more of that OEM uh, adhesive that's adhesive in there, NVH materials, corrosion protection. Um, and it's be a little bit more efficient repair to it. All right, so now let's get into the Honda sectioning uh, statement. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this in its entirety, so bear with me, but it's, it's, I think it's important because this is why Honda developed this, right? Um, replacement of steel parts at factory seams and matching the replacement part configuration remain the preferred repair methods. However, these methods alone are not always practical nor cost effective in all body repair situations. While some limited sectioning procedures are provided in the body repair manual, it is not possible to develop published procedures covering every type of every type and angle of impact. The guidelines detailed below are intended as basic rules for properly trained collision repair professionals to use when sectioning steel parts. I know that's a mouthful, but again, what's important here is that Honda has recognized that they can't develop a sectioning procedure for every, everything. Every, everything. So they're giving you some basic rules and guidelines. Again, not general sectioning guidelines, but Honda developed guidelines for sectioning some of their parts. Um, the first part, as you can see here, it's got to be a single layer area of a steel part. Um, it's got reinforcements in there, not applicable. No. If you've got an area where you've, you've got multiple panels together, not applicable. Um, again, more qualifications. The part's got to be between 270 and 590. So again, we're not talking ultra high strength steel here, although the 590 is getting pretty close. Um, we're talking about you know, mild and high strength steel is what this is going to be applicable to. Um, and it does specifically say outer panels, notice floor panels. And the, the 270, which is mild steel, all the way up to 590, which would be high strength steel, but high strength steel or high, uh, uh, um, is a high end high strength steel. Then you have your medium range high strength steels, like your high strength low alloy steel is non structural. You know, uh, in, in most of the cases and stuff, they might assist the structural component, but they're non structural. So this would be your outer panels, your floor panels, maybe even a wheelhouse, mm -hmm. inner and outer wheelhouse, which is non structural. So this is why it's so important to look at the numbers. And that's why you see, like in all data or the repair information, they give it a megapascal you know, ratings and stuff, but that's why our car, what, a few years ago said anything, you know, 590 and above mm -hmm. is probably not repairable unless specified by a manufacturer's yep. procedure. And, and that's there are important some that, like, GM had, al had allowed some 700 plus yes. to get straight on the Cadillac ATS, yes, I believe. Yes, they did. And uh, I don't know how you could, but, but, but they, they said you they could. It, right? And basically it was an attempt, and obviously anything outside of probably a slight little shift, yeah on a longer rail where you could actually give a little bit of push, but any type of dead thing, you, you, yeah, like that. you're it's not fixing that. Yeah. You, you're just playing around with you know the machine that just wasn't gonna work. Okay. Yeah, so we're talking mostly outer panels here with, this, with, the, with the Honda section. Yep. Again, the, the, they're very specific when it comes to like lower rails, this is the location. They do, again, allow that partial part of factory seams. So if I've got that collapse zone in front and it's damaged and my section, the damage extends beyond the sectioning, I, I may have to replace that at factory seems with that. And that yes. doesn't mean necessarily the entire low rail, it could mean to like the, the cowl area potentially. Um, now here's one thing that you and I are talking about a little bit yesterday, the, the, the preferred sectioning locations, open butt joints with a one millimeter root gap is a suggestion and preferred as the best type for corrosion protection. However, they do go on to say if proper panel fit up cannot be achieved, a 40 millimeter backing plate may be used. Now this doesn't mean just cut it willy nilly, like let's, yeah. let's have, Along with our discretion, let's also have some responsibility um, and, and making things done, do, do things properly. Um, however, if something does happen to go awry, they do allow you to put a backing plate in there. But again, they want an open butt joint. I think we both prefer to see an open butt joint there. Open butt joint gives you the ability to get to the back side of the panel and gives you the ability to um, put corrosion resistant primers corrosion resistant uh, um, anti corrosion compounds in there to prevent. Um, any corrosion further on down the road and stuff and gives the panel a lot more ductility as the torsional movement of the body panels go. If you put a backing plate in there, you've now made that one area a little bit stiffer or react differently. And <clears throat> I mean, a lot of times um, you'll see a lot of mistakes with, you know, from poor welding on an open butt joint. So somebody will put a backing plate in there because that's what they think they need. And the old ICAR UPCRs were when in doubt, put a backing plate. Yep. But now you can't get in there to put uh, uh, um, corrosion protection properties. And that becomes an issue. So uh, if the manufacturer says an open butt joint, 
leave an open butcher. Yep. If they tell you to put a, uh, a backing plate, put a backing plate. If they give you the option between the two, I would still default to an open butt joint, sure. in, in my opinion, is probably the better way to go. You know, and I think we've, we, we as technicians have all felt like we need it there, right? Like, we're, again, we're not, we don't weld all the time. We should be better welders than we are, but we yes. don't weld all the time. So we, I think, as technicians, all felt like, well, if I got a backing plate in there, I, I feel a little bit more confident in my ability versus, again, I'm, I'm, I've got a one and a half millimeter mild steel piece with a one millimeter root cap. That's not the easiest thing to weld all the no. time. So, um, okay, they continue to go on. So this is for, uh, for, for the Honda sectioning yet. Um, sectioning must be done in a single layer, layer area of the parts. So again, those reinforcements, multi-layer multi internal steel reinforcements and stiffeners may not be cut. Um, so we want to make sure that we, we look at those cross sections in our body repair manuals, make sure that we're not going to be cutting into uh, a, a higher, ultra high strength steel reinforcement on there. Um, very similar to what we talked about with the ge old general section guidelines, do not section mm -hmm. low bearing areas such as engine transmission or suspension mounting points. Makes perfect sense. Again, all that stress and that wear on there uh, is, is probably a recipe for disaster. Um, to determine if it has a single area, check the body construction. Well, again, thank you OEMs for making that available yes. so that we can see how those parts are configured, how that layering takes place, how the stacking is, so that we know what we're dealing with. Uh, very, very beneficial. I think an area that technicians probably don't spend enough time looking at. They open the manual, they go right to the section procedure and, and carry on. I look looking at those cross sections to know exactly what I'm dealing with in those areas. Um, uh, spot welds not directly on a flange or joint indicator reinforcement uh, or stiffener side. The replacement section of the body repair manual shows some internal reinforcements as a dotted line. So in addition to those cross sections, we may see some dotted lines in there that will also indicate um, a reinforcement. B pillars, for example, I think you see those uh, quite frequently at the top where it's meeting the roof rail. And this is out of an article from Honda that they put out. Yep. And if you, now this is going to cover all the Hondas unless otherwise specified in the repair procedure. So you might open up a Honda, you know, a, a repair procedure for a quarter panel on a 2023 Honda Accord. You're going to need to reference this because it's not going to be in the repair Correct. procedures. And this is why it's so important that not only damage assessors, estimators, and the technicians, I'll even say the foremans in shops have to make sure the technician understands this. Absolutely. So to yeah. at least say to them, hey, look, we got this out. Unless it says something different there, here's our guidelines. But it's not in that section. And, and you can't access this without the, the paid subscription. Now, you need the yes. paid subscription to get into the procedures themselves, which you absolutely need. But they're nice to but get from an awareness frame. standpoint, again, you click on that industry position statement area, click on the sectioning guideline revision, download it, distribute it, share it with your, with your, with your employees. All right, let's move on to, uh, to General Motors and see what, they've got, what they say about it. Um, so GM, um, again, wow. mostly on the side <laughs> apertures, right, again? Yes. Um, now we've got some shaded areas in here that GM's saying we can kind of section in this area. So here we've got the, the door frame can replace the factory seams, but requires removal of the windshield, roof, quarter panel. Sectioning procedures have been developed as a more cost-effective alternative to completely replace and again, less intrusive and invasive. I always forget which, which word you prefer on there, so I'm gonna use them both so uh, you don't backhand me. Um, the specific area of section is determined by the extent of damage to the vehicle. So again, that's where that technician discretion comes in, that estimator discretion comes in. Based on the extent of damage and based on how they want you to weld that, that's gonna kind of dictate where you're gonna make those section locations in those shaded areas. Right. So what do they recommend as far as the section procedures themselves from the service part, cut the replacement panel in corresponding locations, overlap the remaining original panel by 25 millimeters at each joint. Now this I know has been an area of, of discussion for quite some time as well. They used to have again, a butt joint with backing, plug wells on either side, nice weld on the side. They have since changed that. Um, I went and I grabbed an uh, iCar Vantage article uh, uh, for this, so thank you right. iCar for, for, for this. That's a good um, picture they have. This is, their, this is what they're recommending. So um, they are now calling for this, this 25 millimeter overlap joint. I know a lot of technicians have struggled with this. I know it's something that, that they've, been, they've been tasked with and get frustrated with. Like, does this really make sense? That's the recommendation that they're requiring. So, um, You've had some tips on, you know, maybe flange that a little bit. As you can uh, yeah. see in the, in the right-hand illustration here a little bit. It's a lot of thickness to go over. I mean, I remember some of these procedures years ago, it would be flange the joint, and then on the, on the, on the mating flanges, it would be a butt joint. And there would be no overlap, but there'd be an overlap the rest of it, so it kind of be cut out a little bit. Uh, they've now changed this and overlapped it, so I think you might have some issues trying to put... Um, 
not a windshield in with urethane because that'll yep. give you enough buffer there. But to put like one of the door rubbers on or something like that could be an issue. Could be a little bit of an issue with the body filler because you do have two panels overlapping each other. And I have no way of grinding one right. down or grinding the other one down because you shouldn't be them, you know, together. So this could be a little bit of an issue, maybe a slight flanging of it. So it's still a, a, a lap with a fillet weld on it might make it a little bit easier when you do finish it off. Yep. So honestly, not our favorite procedure. Yeah. Um, but again, that is the OEM published procedure. So if we're, if we're sectioning on a GM vehicle and it's calling for that 25 millimeter overlap, yeah, we you gotta put do that it. 25 millimeter overlap in there. Okay, so now let's move on to, to Stellantis. FCA, Stellantis, Chrysler, Dodge. Um, Jeep. Jeep. Forget Jeep. Yeah, did I forget about yeah, we, we got, got right Jeep here. right here. We brought, we brought that in specifically <laughs> we the Jeep in. to talk about it. And I, and I skipped Jeep. My apologies to all, all, the, all the Jeep owners out there, uh, all the Jeep fans. Um, so Stellantis, again, similar to, to uh, GM. We're giving us a general kind of area in here, not necessarily specific. Um, Instead of lines, they give circles and ovals. Yeah. <laughs> So again, a little bit of technician discretion is going to come involved here. Again, if it's, well, is this kind of borderline? Well, again, we need to, again, use some judgment in that, use our experience um, and, and make the right decision on here. Um, so this says the outer body side aperture has many areas in which the, it may be sectioned. The outline areas represent general sectioning areas. I wish I meant to say general, but it's, it's mm. general sectioning areas. So again, Stellantis general sectioning. Um, to prevent warping a 25 millimeter stitch weld, that makes perfect sense. Um, a butt joint with a 13 millimeter or half inch backer. So unlike GM that's now requiring that modified overlamp, Stellantis here is calling for the traditional kind backing of plate, butt yeah. joint with backing on it. So um, again, then this applies to a lot of vehicles. And the other thing about Stellantis that I didn't include in here, similar to Honda, um, I know it's on the Challenger, I suspect it's in other body repair manuals as well. They also will allow partial part replacement at a factory scene without a published procedure. Right. Again. I was looking at the Challenger just this morning. Um, however, if your, your vehicle, man, if, if that vehicle that you're working on doesn't have that, then don't do that. But again, body, body repair manual. So it's become more difficult with these, with these global platforms. You've got vehicles being developed and procedures being developed in other countries that may not mirror the things that are developed in Detroit. Uh, um, so it's, again, the body repair manual may vary even within a, within a particular model lineup. So very important to, uh, to, to go into there. Okay, Ford. Um, similarly, do not cut outer body, uh, do not carry out body side section repair areas in areas of hinge locations, seat belts, striker mounting points, or within 50 millimeters of door hinge or striking locations because that may result in the uh, compromise of structural integrity. Uh, but they go on to say only remove as much of the outer body side panel materials as necessary using the available tools. So again, mm -hmm. They're giving us some leeway here based on the damage, um, provided we meet all the other requirements to, to go ahead and, and section this. Um, and they, similar to Stellantis, are saying when possible, create a lap joint backer plate using a portion of the old part. This will create a stronger joint. Um, so again, kind of your point, uh, right. the reinforcement. And, but notice there's not a, a, um, it's not a half inch. This is kind of left open to your own interpretation. My suggestion would be keep it as small as you can. Because it doesn't, you know, because if you have too wide of a panel, water and, you know, uh, runoff can get back there and start cre creating a, a corrosion issue. And you may not be able to get the anti-corrosion compound that you try and drop in there and spray in that area. may not seep all the way in there. So a smaller, smaller backing better. plate, you will don't have to worry about it dripping down so much or getting into the crevices as much because it's not that wide of a panel. Yep. Um, and this doesn't apply just to steel vehicles in the Ford model lineup. It also does apply to aluminum vehicles, F-150, Expedition Navigator. Um, and we're, we're not going to dive into this very deep. However, I do want to mention that, that ICAR has done two different, uh, two different videos with Ford um, in the repairs realm, um, where, where Jerry Bonani from Ford visited them, and, and they've got some great B-roll of an actual session procedure on there, again, using the, the Ford general kind of guidelines as far as where to section that. Um, so one's called the Ford Exterior Panel Sectioning Guidelines on Repairs Realm, so you can find that on their YouTube channel. And the other one I threw in here, um, it doesn't necessarily apply, however, this is an area that I know that, that a lot of people have had challenges with. The running boards on those trucks keep getting ripped off, and it was a very, very, very complex repair to replace those. So they actually kind of allow you to section those mounting areas. Um, right. Again, maybe not our favorite, however, 
the fact that they're allowing us to do that, I think really helps w with some of the repairs. Just, you drive by something and rip that running board off. Now, it, 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 if that's the only damage on the vehicle, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a very... Because you've got to take out the outer panel, you've got to take out the pillars and the rock rocker reinforcement to get to that inner panel, be able to change it. It's yep. a, a very extensive on the repair. So they do service these, these, and again, it takes a lot of a lot of delicate, you know, fit up and measuring and, and accurate welding. Uh, but they do allow us to do that. So it's kind of sectioning, but it's kind of not sectioning. So I threw that in here too as well. Um, Toyota. Um, so Toyota's got some sectioning information as well. Um, so there, there's in crib 176. Uh, they note that approved methods include sectioning at specified locations. Now we're talking on approved. Uh, approved and prohibited repair methods for structural repairs. We're not right. talking outer panels now. This document refers to structural repairs. The next one we're going to talk about is going to refer to outer panels. So this is for lower rails, rear rails, things of that nature. Crib uh, Bulletin 176 also says approved open butt joint, prohibited butt joint with backing. So you know, always, the Asians and the Europeans, they like their open butt joints. The domestic three are the, the ones that typically like their butt joint with backing, right. historically speaking anyways. Um, so again, there is no panel bonding or weld bonding. They, they don't have that. Uh, uh, you only use adhesive where specified, which, if I remember correctly, on most of the Hondas, it's just around the wheel opening area uh, on the quarter panel. Yeah. No, crib bulletin 194, uh, 194 looks like. 194. Yeah, 194 yeah. Um, this one mentions uh, for cut and joint locations, minor damage to welded outer panels may not require replacement of an entire. Um, Steel, I'm not going to say rephosphorus, that's a big word, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, may not require re replacement of an entire steel service part um, based on those published cut and, and join locations. Partial replacement at the component, uh, of the component, may minimize intrusion and provide a more streamlined repair. This includes non structural panels that have full procedures listed in the collision repair manual. So, what they're saying here is if I go into Toyota and it gives me a quarter panel replacement that is the entire procedure, I don't necessarily, well, I've got to be at the best, a rocker panel, the, right. entire, the entire rocker panel in there. Or in some cases where you have the, the dog leg section. area. The, yeah. You know, that, that dog leg area got, got hit, um, maybe a truck, the, the uh, lug nuts hit it, and that's the only spot that's damaged. A lot of times you can just section that one little spot in based on this non-structural repair on a quarter panel. Yep. Uh, they do continue to go on to say approved joining methods. So again, for outer body panel replacement, that open butt joint again is a recommended. However, they do allow for a lap weld or a flanging weld. So again, similar to the right. GM kind of flange, um, they do allow for that. Okay, so now Toyota also does have, again, some very specific procedures. Again, we looked at the Stellantis and GM. We've got that general kind of area. However, uh, if we look at this Toyota section procedure, um, they're giving us a specific cut location on this. So. If I look in this manual, even I've looked at the other areas that says, hey, generally speaking, outer panels can be sectioned in this area. When I get into something like this, I want to make that cut in that, in that location. Yeah, basically, if you had to do, let's say, the hinge pillar, um, obviously it looks like you're sectioning down at the bottom and up at the top, you have a specific A distance measurement, and that's, that's where, where you're in a section. It's not the middle of the windshield post. Based on the photo or the, uh, excuse me, the diagram, um, it suggests it's almost three quarters of the way up that windshield post that you're sectioning that, and that's 290 millimeters below the bottom edge of the glass mating flange. Yep. Okay. So, a lot of information there in a, in a fairly short amount of time. Um, the biggest thing, again, is I, I, number one, I appreciate the OEMs are having a little bit more faith in our abilities to, to make some proper decisions. We're relying on you to make those proper decisions as well. Um, this, this technician discretion is something that can, again, be a little bit more efficient from a repair standpoint. We can have those OEM wells and corrosion protection remain intact. Um, but again, we all need to be on the same page and we need to refer the OEM procedures because, yes. as you see, they, they vary even in this area from vehicle maker to vehicle maker and sometimes model to model. Uh, so it's, it's critical that we are, again, each and every time, open up those body repair manuals. Even if I worked on one last week, I'm going to take a look at it again this week. So, And when in doubt, you know, call up Picatech and send, send in the question. We'll try and help you through it. That's right. All right. We'll see you next time.